Hello and welcome to this lesson on 5-axis toolpaths using Fusion 360. In this example, we're going to be talking about the SWARF 5-axis toolpath. Now I've opened a part called SWARF toolpath and we're going to be using this as the basis for our sample cuts. SWARF is a side cutting toolpath. It's where you're using the side of the end mill to cut along the part. So this usually requires that you have some kind of a flat surface. Usually you'll find this across the edge of a part, maybe on a chamfered or beveled edge, or some kind of a tapered wall. Swarf has the ability to take a single cut, side cutting, multiple cuts, side cutting, or you even have the possibility of taking multiple steps across that surface. We're going to look at all of these possibilities. So with my part loaded, and I'm in cam mode, I'm going to come over here to multi-axis. Now if we pull this down, right now we have swarf and multi-axis contour. We're going to be doing swarf, which is the icon that's also on top of the toolbar. First thing we want to do is select our tool. I'm going to start by picking this half-inch flat end mill. Now I just want to show you how easy this is to do to start with. I want to cut across this beveled edge around the top of the part. So I'm going to pick that and I'm going to say OK. And that's it. We've created a 5-axis toolpath around that beveled edge. So if I go to simulate and hit play, we'll see it come down, lead onto the part, and cut around with a side cutting motion. We'll select our swarf icon again. We'll take a look at the geometry tab and here are the main choices that we have for selecting our geometry. We can pick either by contours or surfaces. Now when we pick the faces of the part, it will determine if we can cut across those faces. Not all faces can be swarf machined. So under drive mode is where we make the choices on what is actually driving the tool across the part. We can select the faces of the part or we can select contour edges. But either way, we're looking for something that's going to create a flat edge that we can side cut across. So again, here is where we're selecting what actually drives the contour. Then we have our selection mode. With selection mode, it tells Fusion how we're going to pick what it is that we want to cut. So I can tell it that I'm picking faces or that I'm picking edge curves. Edge curves are always selected as pairs. So initially, we told that we were picking a contour, which means it's using the edges of the faces that we pick to determine the edges that make up the swarf cut. Now, if I change this to contour pairs, I can pick this chain and this chain. Now, notice I picked the lower one first. It makes a difference. That's really about the only thing that makes a difference. When you pick the lower contour, you're telling Fusion where the tool is pointing. So this first selection will be the bottom of the tool and the next selection will be the upper part of the tool. Now it knows which way the tool is pointing. We can say OK and it will generate the tool path side cutting between those curves. Now it looks like it's leading on from the back side of the part here. Let me right click over the top of that operation and select Edit. And I want to jump over here to the linking parameters. On the linking parameters, we can see that positions, entry position, is highlighted. So I only have to come over here and pick this as my entry point. That's telling it where we want to start our toolpath from. Now it's going to lead on, go around, and end at this point. Let's create another example. Let's go back to our Swarf toolpath, and under geometry, this time we're going to pick surfaces. So again, this is not how we're selecting it. This is what we're telling it is driving the toolpath. So I'm going to pick those surfaces going all the way around. OK. And again, we're going to get pretty much the same toolpath. It might be starting from a different point. In this case, it's starting back here. But we know how to change that now. Let's go back to Swarf, Geometry, and let's change our selection mode to Manual. So we want to manually select this by surfaces. I'm going to pick this face, this face, this face, and this face. OK that. And now we've created a partial swarf cut 
where it's only cutting those individual faces that I manually selected. To try that again, we'll go back into our Swarf toolpath under Geometry. I'll leave this on Contours. This time I'll pick Manual for my selection mode. And I'm going to pick these edges manually. I'm going to pick this one. Then I'm going to pick this one. Then I'm going to pick up here. Then I'm going to pick over here and up here and over here, down here and down here. Now, why did I pick them in that order? Well, I picked them in that order specifically to show you that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what order I pick those edges in. The only thing that really matters is that my first selection be on the lower chain because that's determining which way the tool is pointing. So with those selections made, I'm going to say OK. And there's our 5-axis Swarf toolpath contoured between those edges. So let's do something on these lower walls. We'll go back to Swarf again, go back to my geometry, and I'm just going to pick these faces going all the way around. OK that. So there's our cut. And again, this time it's decided it wants to start from this point. If you look over at the operation, there's a little yellow triangle showing us that we have a warning message. Now, if I click on that message, it says, warning, tool was lifted. And then it gives you a time for completing the calculation for the toolpath. Now, what I want to point out here is there's a difference between a warning and an error. An error is a problem with the toolpath. It requires your immediate attention and possibly creates a dangerous situation. A warning is just telling you about something that has occurred. In this case, the warning is about a situation that the software needed to compensate for. So it had to lift the tool. Probably when it was matching up with this edge, it needed to raise the tool up to accommodate cutting that edge completely. So a warning, while it might seem alarming, is not the same as an error message. So let's try that again. And this time, we're going to select contour pairs. I'm going to pick this lower chain and the upper chain. I'm going to go and select my starting point to be right here and we'll OK that. Again, if we wanted a partial, I could go to multi-axis. And for our drive mode, we're going to select surfaces and we're going to manually pick individual faces. Now again, if I select all of these and go to Simulate, there's our full cut around the top. Our next full cut around the top, which is driven by the chains. Another one driven by faces. This one's going the opposite way for a partial selection, and then backwards for a partial selection. Here's the lower contour. And again, individual faces for the lower contour.